Welcome to my video. I'm going to call this one the story of when I auditioned for Steve Miller, the great Steve Miller rock musician who was the head of Steve Miller Band, which had previously been the Steve Miller Blues Band in San Francisco. So this is about 1967 and through 66 and 67, I was going from my home in the suburbs, about 17 miles south of San Francisco. I was going frequently to San Francisco to see bands in the, the rock halls there, the, the Fillmore Auditorium and the Avalon Ballroom. And um, I don't remember it that well, but I do remember that I saw Steve Miller blues band there a lot. I, I remember him playing the harmonica one time and I saw them enough times to form an impression about Steve Miller band, you know. Um, he was a guitarist and a singer and he played harmonica and when he played harmonica he didn't play the guitar and he had bass drums and he had a keyboard player, Hammond B3. And um, there was another guitar player and his name was uh, James Curly Cook. We referred to him as Curly Cook and he had long curly blonde hair, you know. And the guy was a good guitarist. He was probably a better guitarist than Steve Miller, but he kind of played um, the role of a rhythm guitar player in that band. And that was before uh, the great Boz Skaggs uh, joined the Steve Miller band. Eventually, Boz Skaggs joined like in about June 1967, or after June 1967. Uh, after Steve Miller had played the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. So I used to see them with Curly Cook and I was enjoying what Curly Cook was doing and I enjoyed what Steve Miller was doing and um, I was playing in bands then, playing guitar and singing, playing harmonica. Uh, I may have been between bands then, I don't know. I heard a rumor that Curly Cook had left the van and that Steve Miller was looking for another guitarist and that he was having difficulty finding another guitarist. So he decided to have auditions for another guitarist at the Musicians Union Hall in San Francisco. So people were telling me about this friend, you know, why don't you go and audition for Steve Miller? You know, I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not, I don't fly in those circles, you know, I'm not in that league. You know, I'd be like way above my pay grade, you know. So, but it, as it turned out, I went. And I went and I, you know, I drove to the Musicians Union Hall in San Francisco. And I sat down, I took out my old 54 Fender Stratocaster and I was warming up. And there was a guy there that also played guitar and he became friendly and he, uh, he liked what I was doing on guitar as far as leads. And he was Steve Miller's roadie. But he also played guitar. And he probably could have been in that band is what came out, but he didn't sing at all, you know. So Steve Miller wanted a guy that could play backup guitar and that could sing. Which is interesting because I never, I never saw Curly Cook sing in that band. And certainly Bob Skaggs. Bob Skaggs was great. He was really great. He, I think he soon outgrew that band. Anyway, so I was there. I was playing. There was kind of a buzz about uh, that I played pretty good lead guitar. So, I don't know whether if it was before me, there was something going on, and then there was that guy, that roadie guy, he got up and he auditioned. And he was good. And he knew all the parts to all the Steve Miller songs, you know. And um, 
but you know he didn't sing you know he wanted someone who could sing too so it became my turn and um they were waiting for the bass player to show up no bass player so steve miller told me okay i'm gonna play bass you play guitar and you sing okay and um I said, all right. Uh, I think that I might have gotten to sing a song before we did that. Maybe. It's, uh, I sang a, a John Lee Hooker song, a boogie call, I'm Going Upstairs. And I, I played that boogie and I sang that boogie and I guess Miller played bass and there was a drummer and I also blew a harmonica solo in that song. So then, actually, I think he was encouraged by that. So he said, okay, we're going to play this song. I'm going to play bass. Uh, I want you to play this guitar pattern. He showed me a guitar pattern. It's it's a song that I do. It's like that song Crossroads by Robert Johnson that Cream does, you know. And you sort of have to play a boogie pattern. No, 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 no. And he was showing it to me up on the, it's in the key of A on the fifth fret but he wanted me to play the riff at the same time so and it's actually really easy if you play it down in the first position the way eric clapton played it i didn't know that then so i'm trying to go hey it's hard on the fingers to play that boogie pattern thing and keep it up it's hard to make it even more complicated by playing the riff too. And to sing at the same time, you know, so. I didn't do very good at the task, you know. And that other young guy who had, who had auditioned and was his roadie, you say, oh, well, yeah, man, I, I guess you're more, more into league, you know, than that, you know, or something like that. And then uh, I stuck around a while. Some other guy got up after me and he just knocked them out. And no, it wasn't Boss Skaggs. It was a guy who had a local band called Ohm, A-U-M, Ohm. And his name was Wayne Ceballos. And I had met him before. He's, they called him Wayne the Harp because he played harmonica too. And I remember he came to a rehearsal that I had with a band and I was playing the Paul Butterfield blues band song, Blues with a Feeling. And he, afterwards he corrected me on some of the blowing, so that was nice. So he was there auditioning, singing and playing guitar. So he started playing a song of his own, a song that he wrote called Mississippi Mud and it was kind of a funky, he was ahead of his time, it was kind of like listening to the band or something. And he was singing and playing funky and it was like, it was great. He played a couple of songs like that. And uh, the rumor that I heard is that he didn't go in Steve Miller band because they weren't willing to offer him the kind of money he wanted. And I think maybe he wanted an equal cut or a bigger cut and they just weren't, you know. So, <laughs> That was it for me. I was 1967, I was 17 or 18. And I did get to play with those cats and they, they heard what I was doing. And uh, no, I didn't get that job. And within a few months, within June 1967, Boss Skaggs joined that group. So I hope you enjoyed it. The Steve Miller Band audition story. Ciao.